over a decade, the bronchiolitis guidelines established in 2014 by the American Academy of Pediatrics, or AAP, have influenced national and international practice to de-implement albuterol, racemic epinephrine, and hypertonic saline for infants presenting with respiratory distress secondary to bronchiolitis syndrome. Despite significant efforts to educate and promote adherence, widespread noncompliance with the guidelines continues. Is it possible that doctors recognize benefits from these medications for their patients? Albuterol The de-implementation recommendation for albuterol by the AAP bronchiolitis guidelines was strongly influenced by the 2014 Cochrane Review titled Bronchodilators in Bronchiolitis. Three different versions, 2006, 2010, and 2014 of this meta-analysis consistently downplayed statistically significant results and medium effect sizes, which suggest clinical score benefit for albuterol. Racemic epinephrine The guidelines strongly recommended de-implementation of racemic epinephrine based on speculation that its transient effect would result in frequent return visits to the emergency department. Nevertheless, the soundness of that recommendation was questionable, since the study referenced by the guidelines reported that multiple comparisons did not show an increase in return visits after treatment with epinephrine. Hypertonic saline The 2014 AAP bronchiolitis guidelines supported therapeutic trials of hypertonic saline for hospitalized patients but recommended against its use in the outpatient arena. Since the publication of the guidelines, Multiple meta-analyses have been published that have demonstrated evidence of benefits in the outpatient setting. The benefits appear to be greatest when hypertonic saline is combined with nebulized epinephrine or albuterol. A team of researchers conducted an umbrella review of all meta-analyses cited and not cited by the guidelines that included outpatient sub-analyses to find the most current and highest quality evidence concerning the clinical benefits of the three de-implemented medications. The researchers performed online database searches for the use of albuterol, hypertonic saline, and epinephrine in bronchiolitis. They employed a search strategy based on the population, intervention, comparator, outcomes, and studies framework. To present the effects of epinephrine and hypertonic saline on clinical responses and the risk of hospitalization, the authors used albatross plots for multiple sub-analyses. For the predominant albuterol meta-analysis, multiple suspected errors and questionable study inclusions were identified, and reanalyses were performed for relevant sub-analyses. The umbrella review included six meta-analyses for albuterol, four meta-analyses for epinephrine, and 11 meta-analyses for hypertonic saline. Notably, all three de-implemented medications exhibited one or more therapeutic effects and benefits for infants with bronchiolitis. In addition, the albatross plots of meta-analyses of epinephrine and hypertonic saline treatments visually represented the reported reduction in risk of hospitalization and improved clinical scores. Finally, the researchers addressed the suspected errors of the 2014 Cochrane Review titled Bronchodilators in Bronchiolitis and presented corrected sub-analyses that confirmed medium effect sizes, implying a moderate clinical benefit for albuterol. The authors feel that their research is the best and most current evidence available and that it clearly demonstrates the benefit of the three de-implemented medications for infants presenting with bronchiolitis syndrome in outpatient settings. Furthermore, the evidence confirms that combinations of these medications, such as epinephrine and hypertonic saline or albuterol and hypertonic saline, are especially effective at relieving respiratory distress, often avoiding intensive care unit or ICU admissions, and sometimes facilitating discharge home. After a decade of conflicting confusion, Frontline clinicians should feel empowered to reinstate these three medications as a standard part of their therapeutic armamentarium for managing bronchiolitis syndrome. 
because millions of infants and young children present every year to emergency departments with bronchiolitis syndrome, relief of respiratory distress, reduced hospital admissions, and avoidance of pediatric ICU admissions with associated reduced medical costs clearly appear to be possible outcomes based on this data. Finally, the authors strongly emphasize the need for higher quality evidence and advocate for further well-designed, adequately powered, randomized controlled trials and high-quality meta-analyses.